We're very mildly safer than we were a year ago, but not much. The main reason being, as I've stressed, the complexity means this is going to take time. Now, if you ask me again a year from today, I think a lot of the things that have to be done will have been done by that point. Sometimes there's transition periods that run out further. But this, I think, is the critical year, the critical 12 months for implementation. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the first anniversary of Dodd-Frank and its impact on financial reform. For years, Wall Street was paved with questionable, unregulated practices that ultimately led to the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. In 2010, Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Act, sweeping legislation to overhaul the financial regulatory system. While some opponents are trying to gut the regulations, the new law reduces risks, protects consumers, and helps bolster markets against deep downturns, notes fellow Douglas Elliott. He says on balance, Dodd-Frank is good for the financial sector. Doug, it's been a year since the bill became a law, yet so many provisions of Dodd-Frank have not been acted on. Why is that? We need to be a little bit patient because Dodd-Frank was a very big bill and the actions it requires from the regulators are even bigger. We're basically taking a complex financial system and changing a lot of the rules and they interact with each other. So one of the things that's happened is that basically every deadline, give or take maybe a few, that was set in the law has been missed. And it's easy to then look at that and say that well, there's a problem here. I don't s see it that way at all. I think the problem was that completely unrealistic deadlines were set. Well, in that same 12-month period, opponents to the bill have been busy lobbying for all sorts of changes. Some just want to amend it, others want to gut it. How will Dodd-Frank likely look in the end? First of all, let me just say that Dodd-Frank is going to survive almost intact. That is, it's true that there are Republicans who want to change it. Some of the Republican presidential candidates want to repeal it, as do some Republican members of Congress. It's not going to happen. There will be some changes around the edges. There probably should be some changes around the edges. But the broad thrust is going to stay the same. Let's take a look at some of the provisions of Dodd-Frank, and I'd like to begin with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which actually pr protects the rights of ordinary people. This will be important. Prior to this, we had pr consumer protection in finance spread among a number of agencies, and none of them made it a priority. And you saw all the problems we had as a result, problems with mortgages that weren't appropriate and were missold, problems with a lot of other types of loans and of course a lot of complaints about credit cards. So it makes sense to have a single Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to focus on these things. And increasing the amount of capital that banks hold as a safety margin is something that has been agreed to in all quarters around the globe. This is something that's more in a related set of, inst of international agreements called Basel III. But there are agreements to raise the level of capital held by banks. Basically, capital is the part of a bank's assets that nobody has a claim on. And therefore, they're available to handle any kind of emergency that might come up. As we just saw in the recent financial crisis, it's helpful to have a big safety margin there. And we had only very small safety margins. So that is something the regulators, with Congress's encouragement, are going to remedy by substantially raising those levels. Derivatives are another significant area covered under this law. These are complex financial instruments that have become a part of the day-to-day -day financial life of our country. Big corporations and financial institutions, even wealthy individuals, use derivatives all the time. Airlines use them to protect themselves against oil prices changing too much and causing fuel prices to be too high. It's a very important part of our economy, but it wasn't treated in the regulation until recently as very important. It was pretty loosely regulated. Dodd-Frank makes a number of changes to try to have derivatives be traded in a more open way and with larger safety margins, collateral and other things held against them to reduce the risk that if somebody doesn't pay off on a derivative, 
that will have a domino effect and knock over a lot of other financial institutions. There's the Volcker Rule, which you've always taken issue with. I still don't like the Volcker Rule. Uh, I think it's approaching what's arguably a problem, but in the wrong way. That is, certainly there were institutions that took too much investment risk or the wrong kind. It's not clear to me that the Volcker Rule would actually have changed the financial crisis very much. But even if we needed to tackle that issue, there are better ways to do it. What we'd like to do is to measure the risk, measure the capacity to take the risk, and make sure that those are lined up. Instead, the Volcker Rule essentially relies on looking into the heart of the trader or banker and telling why they were doing something. I don't care what the intent was. What I care about is the level of risk represented by the action. So there's a good reason that literally no other country in the world is doing this, because it doesn't make that much sense. So is it fair to say that Dodd-Frank is the right combination of rules and regulations to manage the financial sector and bolster it against future economic downturns? The administration and even the Democratic majority worked hard to find a balance in Dodd-Frank, to add safety margins, but to still allow our system to function in a fairly free way. I think they found roughly the right balance. I mean, if I were czar, I'd change a few things, but the balance is pretty good. So yes, there are more costs for the industry. Some of those costs will be passed on through to consumers and businesses, but better that we pay a little bit more for a loan than that every 20 years or so we have the world blow up. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.